discussing noise margin last time right and what was the idea here we basically had the voltage transfer characteristics vtc v out versus v in for an inverter like this v in v out Okay, so the VTC is like this and we said that the point at which the slope becomes minus 1 is of significance because before that right or outside that the signal gets attenuated or noise gets attenuated within that region the noise gets amplified. And therefore, the region of importance is between the points at which the slope is minus 1. Okay, that's why minus 1 is a magic number here. Okay, so we basically said that this was VIL, this was VIH. Right, the corresponding y axis coordinates were defined to be VOL, and this was defined to be VOH. Okay, so the idea of noise margin is if I have one inverter driving another inverter like this and I have noise fluctuating here, right, then uh, how does it go and get, how does it affect, you know, if I have noise on each of these nodes, then how does the signal propagation get affected was the question, right. So, for example, if the input was VIL, then the output of the first inverter which is I1 and this is I2, output of the first inverter I1 would be VOH, right. But for VOH to get recognized as a logic high for inverter 2, VOH has to be greater than VIH, right. So therefore the noise margin high is VOH minus VIH. Similarly, if you gave v, uh, VIH here, then you would get VOL here. The output of the first inverter will give you VOL and for VOL to get recognized as a logic low on inverter I2, VOL has to be less than VIL. Therefore, the noise margin low is VIL minus VOL. Why noise margin? Because I have that much of margin for the noise to actually cause a fluctuation and not cause a change in the output. Right? That is the margin that I have and that is why it is called noise margin. Okay? And of course, to derive this, you know, we had to make some assumptions earlier. We said that we will take this point where V in equal to V out, right? This is V out equal to V in. And this point, we would call it Vm comma Vm. That is both input and output are the trip point Vm, okay? And we would be said that we will just extrapolate this slope. Right, and then whatever intersects here, this is what we call VIL, and this point we called as VIH. Right, this is what we did earlier. So, last class we stopped at the point when we started discussing long channel inverter. Suppose we had a long channel device instead of a short channel device, then what would happen to this assumption? Is this model even valid? Right, so let us go back to long channel inverters. Okay, which means that all short channel effects equal to 0. 
no channel length modulation the velocity saturation voltage is very high right so therefore from linear it will only go into saturation right and all these things basically just vanish from our discussion okay so now if you remember the gain expression right equal to dv out by dv in at v in equal to v out equal to vm was proportional to 1 over lambda n minus lambda p right and this is nothing but if uh, lambda p equals minus lambda n then this would be 1 over 2 lambda n right so because of very small value of lambda n channel length modulation this gain is very high and we got some expressions from that right but of course in a long channel inverter what is lambda n zero so therefore if i use this particular model to derive the vil and vih of the inverter of a long channel inverter what would happen is because at this point which is v in equal to v out sorry v out equal to v in right at this point if i consider the gain it is minus infinity right it's not plus infinity because the curve will fall minus infinity and therefore if i do the same extrapolation the curve will just extrapolate like this okay and both v i h v i h equal to v i l equal to v m they will both simply collapse to this point though whatever i have shown here is not the vtc of a long channel inverter this is the model that we used where we extrapolated the slope at v in equal to v out equal to v m and pulled that line all the way up that is the blue line the actual vtc is what is shown in black here it will come like this at this point it will be minus infinity and then again it will deviate like this so clearly this model that we used earlier works only for short channel device inverters where lambda n and lambda p are non zero right so now the question is how do i derive an expression for vil and vih for a long channel inverter right so it turns out that the model was used in the first place because the expressions current expressions for short channel inverters was very complicated and therefore actually solving for this point when the slope is actually minus 1 on both sides was very hard because you had velocity saturation then you had channel length modulation you had so many things right there's so many dependence on v in and v out so solving for this point where dv out by dv in is minus 1 was very hard in a short channel inverter therefore we use the approximation and the model and that is a reasonable model right now it turns out here that you don't have to actually use that model at all you can derive everything from first principles right this is v i l v i h and this is v o h and this is v o l right <clears throat> so at point 1 and this is point 2 d v out by d v in equal to minus 1 that's the definition for the noise margin right so in region 1 in which mode of operation is the nmos which mode of operation is the pmos yeah okay i need to this is something you should really get used to you no know, so maybe let's do it again so that you this is v in v out this is wp by l this is wn by l okay in region 1 voh is nearly vdd very close to vdd 
right so let's again write these expressions vds vds sorry vds for nmos and pmos so vgs is what for the nmos in terms of v in and v out v v in what about vds v out pmos v in minus vdd and vds v out plus vdd okay now voh is nearly vdd right therefore vds for the nmos is what vdd nearly vdd right v in is what you can assume it's just above threshold somewhere it's a very small value so in which region of operation is it vds is greater than vgs minus vt and therefore nmos has to be in saturation okay so in region 1 nmos is in saturation pmos is in linear right in region 2 nmos is in linear pmos is in saturation so we will now use these expressions in order to solve for the points vil and vih okay <coughs> what is idsn what is the saturation current remember there is no velocity saturation now it's in it's a long channel inverter so directly it is going to go into saturation so what is idsn half kn prime wn by l into v in minus vtn whole squared right this is in saturation current what about idsp yeah kp prime wp by l into ah it's a linear current right so it is vds into vgs minus vt minus vds by 2 what is vds v not minus v not minus vdd into v in minus vdd minus vtp minus v not minus vdd by 2 right now again we impose our good old condition idsn equals minus idsp right two transistors in series one current is going up one current is going down they have to be the same and therefore idsn equal to minus idsp which implies i can now write half into kn prime wn into v in minus vtn the whole squared equals minus kp prime wp by l into v not minus vdd into v in minus vdd minus vtp minus i'll just leave this as it is okay i'm not going to simplify that vdd term for now right so now what do you do differentiate both sides with respect to v in differentiate with respect to v in implies kn prime wn v in minus vtn equals minus kp prime wp into dv not by dv in into v in minus vtd minus vtp minus v not minus vdd by 2 plus v not minus uh, vdd into 1 minus half dv not by dv in right now let's let minus kp prime wp by kn prime wn 
equals R. Right, then I can say implies V in minus VTN equals R times dv out by dv in what is dv out by dv in at that point minus 1 right so therefore i can write this as minus 1 and what is v in at that point v i l at that point when the slope is minus 1 by definition it is v i l right into v i l minus v d d minus v t p minus v o h minus v d d by 2, right, correct, plus V out minus VDD into 1 minus half of DV naught by D in will just become 3 by 2. So, can you now simplify and get me an expression for VIL? Do not make any assumption, right. V out by the way is what actually it is V O H. Yeah. Can you now simplify this expression and get me the uh, expression for V I L? Are you getting this expression? Are you getting this expression? right okay now what about v o h v i h you got to do the exact opposite right for v i h p mos is in which region saturation n mos is in linear okay so can we write the expression for the currents idsp is k p prime half w p by l into v g s minus v t p the whole square right which is nothing but v in minus v d d minus v t p whole square and i d s n equals k n prime w n by l what is v d s for the n mos yeah, V naught. What about V in minus V T N minus V naught by 2? Right? Again, I go ahead and do the same thing. E equals minus I D S P, which implies K 
kn prime wn into v naught into v in minus v t n minus v naught by 2 equals minus kp prime wp into v in minus v d d minus v t p the whole square again differentiate with respect to v in dv out by dv in equal to minus 1 right use this fact implies kn prime and minus kp prime wp pi kn prime wn equals r which implies i can write dv out by dv in into v in minus v t n v naught by 2 plus v naught into 1 minus dv out by v in half right <coughs> equals v in minus v d d minus v t p into r. So, can you simplify this and tell me what you get for of course, here v in is nothing but v i h, v out is nothing but v o l. Can you get me the expressions? to v v naught so this is what again this is 3 by 2 v naught plus 2 v o l plus r into v i h is v t n plus 2 v o l plus r into v d d plus v t p by do you get this yeah okay good so I just derived the whole thing so that you are you get used to this kind of solving of uh, you know these equations okay so now let us compare the earlier expression that we also had right what was our v v i l is v t n plus r into this so can I copy this Yeah, so V i l is this. So, can you compare these two expressions and see what do you get here? I am going to write this as V t n plus R into V d d plus V t p plus 2 V o l by 1 plus R. And this I am going to write as V T N plus R into V D D plus V T P plus 2 R correct V O H 
माइनस थ्री जी डी बाय वन प्लस आर सो व्हाट इज दिस रीजन बिटवीन वी आई एल एंड वी आई हेच हाउ थिन इज दिस रीजन राइट आइडियली यू वुड वांट इट टू बी अ जीरो thickness you know uh, zero uh, indeterminate region right you want the inverter characteristic to fall sharply like this but inevitably there is a small region so what is this delta v uh, i i l h right which i'm going to call it as v i h minus v i l clearly you can see that this vtn and r into vdd plus vtp is sort of gone right so you basically have simply uh vih minus vil right so 2 vol minus 2r into voh minus vdd by 1 plus r right so i can write this as 2 into vol minus r into voh plus 2r into vdd by 1 plus r actually that's not necessary right we don't need this uh, no this simplification is not necessary okay so what is vol it's a number which is very close to zero voh number which is very close to vdd right so voh minus vdd is a very very small negative number vol is a very very small positive number so if you see this difference it's actually a extremely small number so for example you could assume let right vol equals voh minus vdd or vdd minus voh for symmetry right it's on either side it's going by the same amount is what we are saying so if that's the case then how, what does that thing simplify to vilh is 2 vol minus plus 2r into vol sorry right what does it simplify to 1 plus r comes out and you have twice vol so what are we saying for a long channel inverter this region in which this the input is an indeterminate input is actually simply twice vol it's such a small region it is almost like up to vdd by 2 everything is logic low after vdd by 2 everything is logic high right so that's the reason i wanted to go through this long channel inversion inverter derivation because it allows me to show you exactly that this is true clear so that region in which because the slope is minus infinity at v in equal to v out equal to vm that region also has to be very 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 small for a long channel inverter clear of course here i am assuming that vol equal to vdd minus voh which is a fair thing actually because voh is supposed to be vdd vol is supposed to be ground ideal okay any questions here so two things one short channel transistor the equations are very complex because just think about this now in in each of these terms if i add a 1 plus lambda v not 
just think about how you will do this differentiation and get the accurate answer it's not possible it's not even tractable and it's not even useful the end of the day i don't even get a result like this where i can intuitively understand something from it right it just makes it very complex and therefore we resort to that approximation where we extrapolate that line at v in equal to v out equal to vm with that same slope and then extrapolate those points as vih and vil right but for the long channel device it is possible to derive these expressions very accurately clear and if you make the assumption that vol is equal to 0 and voh is vdd then you will find that this region delta vilh is basically zero so that's also not true so somewhere it is because voh and vol are not exactly vdd and ground respectively that's when this small indeterminate region actually comes into picture okay here we have made no approximations whatsoever all expressions are accurate here okay